I believe I found a, a neuroma uh, of uh, on the front of a knee that was the uh, infrapatellar branch of the the saphenous nerve, and and I had to do my own study on it, and 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 uh, you know it's only after you sit and do your looking into it and go crud, that's exactly what I'm seeing that that I mean, I've never I've never found a neuroma, but I you know I, it's that kind of stuff that just makes me go. Man, I just wish I could somehow download the brain of John and and just say instead of okay, but maybe discovery is really what keeps it fresh. You know, I I I I think that 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 might be too. That's how, that's how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I do that. I that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess one of the things that I would like to ask you about is the correlation between what you expect the muscle to look like um, when there is, and let me set this up a little bit differently. And when I go back to watch myself to ask you these questions, I just, I would never watch me. <laughs> Here's let me, let me re, re, retrace this. I have scanned people's hamstrings, and I have seen the cloudy whiteness of their biceps femoris long head, and I've come across their short head, and it's been fascicular and nice. You know, it, I, I've I've seen the difference between the, the the long head of the biceps and 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 the fatty infiltration that occurs on it, and the short head stays reasonably nice. Um, and so when I imaged a patient this last week, that literally, I, th there was not a shred of, of supraspinatus material from the immediately trans, you know, uh, moving along ahead of the biceps to, to just a few fibers of the infraspinatus tendon. I, I, I couldn't wait to take a look at the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus on their scapula. But John, the muscles looked as reasonably healthy and the only thing I can figure is that that whole cuff was still being pulled on by these muscles that didn't even have tendons in in any of that visible area below the acromion yeah. so I guess the question comes back to you as when you see muscles that are cloudy and certainly represent fatty infiltration or fibrotic transitioning. Yeah. Is that just a comment you make or do you have a correlative to be able to say, look, that tendon is intact. That muscle is degrading. This must be a neural problem. Do you have the ability to do that in your head? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. I'm just trying to as as always, I'm I'm not ill prepared. Well, uh, but you had no idea what I was going to ask you. <laughs> yeah. I no, but there, there there should be a way to be prepared, and and, and I'm I'm thinking about how to do that. But because uh, there's no point in me archiving all this stuff and and not being able to access it in this sort of environment. So uh, let's let's share. Don, it, when you come up with what you think. It would take. Would you let me share in the cost of making that so? I, 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 I maybe, but uh, but it's it's it, it is it isn't the, the cost is is not the issue. It's, it's well, it would be if you have to employ Beth to do all the uh, redesignating of names, and yeah. and and. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, you might you might be right there. I'm sharing now. Yes. Yeah, so let's have a look at, uh, let's go, uh, let's go into that one. Sorry, infraspinatus, let me, let me go. This is not less well prepared. No uh, worries. Yeah, that's all right. I just, it just happens, and, I, and, and that this is just for an illustration, uh, that I just happen to be looking at a scan of, and this is this was a bit of infraspinatus. Yes. Uh, here, this is infraspinate. This is the uh, the infraspinatus fossa. Yes. This is atrophy here. Now this is straightforward. This is this is a massive cuff tear. 
What is that? Is that also a cis? No, this is a normal uh, Terry's minor. Oh, yes. Good. A normal Terry's minor adjacent to yes. atrophied infraspinatus. Yes. Yeah. Now, in this case, I would say that was pretty much uh, this, is, this is atrophy. This is, uh, this is mechanical. Infraspinatus was gone. Uh, uh, Terry's minor is, is still intact. And, and you look for that. Uh, and that has some uh, significance to the surgeons if they were thinking of repairing. But if I see that, and this is where I like to you see it quite a lot in the, in the shin, in the, in the calf. Uh, and you see it a lot for reasons I can't explain in older people. But you also see it sometimes when I get cases where people have, say, you know, tib post is, uh, has ruptured because they're not getting any tib post function. You go, tib post looks fine. And you look up and you, there's just no tendon or tib ant is another classic one. Or tib ant tendon looks fine. You go up and it's not functioning because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's lost its nerve supply. And yes. Do you, just, you ever see it the other way around? Do you ever see the loss of its insertion and, and, and it does not go through that mechanical transition? I don't, I'm, I'm always down. You see it quite a lot in the cuff. Yeah. Quite a lot uh, with supraspinatus. And what I think, uh, what, and the reason I think that's, uh, that is, is because sometimes when you look really closely, even a large tear of supraspinatus, that part of the leading edge that's actually going into the, along the biceps, when the biceps is intact, or there, there's actually some of supraspinatus is still intact. And it, it says, if I can help a little bit, I'm going to still keep my beefiness because that little bit, it had better be five times as strong if I'm going to be, I, it must be. I don't, I. But this is, but, but I see that quite a lot because now I've, I've in, in recent times, I've just got into the habit of just part of my walk around the shoulder involves looking at infraspinatus, just noticing infraspinatus teres minor and supraspinatus muscle belly. And, and that I do that mostly so I don't miss, not mostly, but partly so I don't miss uh, things like cysts in the, uh, around the, uh, the suprascapular nerve. Uh, do, you, do, do, you, do you take a look at all of serratus anterior? Um, there used to be, I, I, there are some, there's some Australian guys who, who, who have, you know, these videos on, on, on scapular dyskinesia that they're, that they're imaging all these type of things where the, the, the serratus anterior is, I, I, did I you, seen, but I, but, but I don't look for it at all. You yeah. have to, I would be, I would have to go looking for it. And so, uh, because, because it, it, it's that much more trouble and yeah. it's, it's significant only in a particular cohort of patients. Yeah, I agree. So, unless someone tells me that it's it, it's common incidental finding or it, or it has some clinical significance in my population, I'm just not going to look at it. But you know, I you see it regularly. I, I'm, I'm often looking at lumps and bumps in that part, and so you you'll just happen to notice you because you're going to say in your report where the lump and bump is near. So you'll say, oh, this is close to. Uh, uh, over serratus anterior or in serratus anterior if it's, if it's an intramuscular lipoma. But that's, uh, but that's as far as I go. And uh, I think I might have seen atrophy in it once. But. Yeah. I want to I wanna look at any wow things from you now before you go to bed. Uh, let's have a look. When are you going to have your next gather all these big name people or at least gather all these people that know you're a big name? <laughs> I, I don't, I, I have just been overworked recently. Yeah, sorry about that. You need a vacation at Whistler. You need, I you need, need to, yes, you do. And, and, yeah. and, uh, I need to go and I need to, I need some easy snow to, cause I, cause I, cause I need it, need to be easy because my legs are just not, not what they once were. But, <laughs> yeah. it, it was nice places to buy hot chocolate because that's all, all yes. bad. 
Which we is, can't even go up to Canada yet, so it, it, it's not open, you know, for us. Do you, can you guys travel around the uh, EU or whatever? No, no. There's, uh, I, th I think there's still a ban on uh, non-essential travel out, out, of, out of the country. We can get around in the country, but uh, but non-essential uh, travel out of the country is is banned. Uh, let's look. I can I can turn off record if you'd like if if you're needing. No, it. no, that's all right. It's just uh, uh, I think everything's uh, done. This was just a little heinous. This was almost incidental finding, but the patient was a little bit un uncomfortable with this. This uh, is snapping. Hmm? Yeah, this this is the lateral malleolus, and that's the. Uh, the brevis and longus? Yeah, and he's got a little osteophyte here. Yes. And he's got lots of edema and thickening around this retinaculum. You know, the, the retinaculums come off there. It wouldn't sublux. It just wouldn't come out. I was expecting, given how complicated it looks, that it yeah. was going to come. And all I could see was this aberrant movement where they, it sort of catches in and flicks around as I move the foot around. You're just taking it through circumduction, or, 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 or is he doing uh, it? I was, I was just getting him to uh, evert the foot, so just taking it up there. And uh, so that was that was just a, a little uh, sort of soupçon of a thing. Uh, that's April. Just looking at some of the more hip joint effusion. What was this? This was superficial. This. Uh, Prepatellar bursitis. Oh yeah, okay. This is this patient was uh, very mild, very mild. In, in fact, asymptomatic by the time I saw them. They'd had it reported elsewhere, and they were coming to me for an injection, and uh, and they just didn't have, and there just wasn't very much going on. So there's a little bit of fluid there. Yeah. And this patient uh, is reasonably heavy, uh, but uh, but you can just see that fluid in there and. And you wonder whether that's actually a bursa or whether they've, tra they've traumatized the fat. Because uh -huh. it doesn't really look like, it's almost like a little tear in the fat. You get well, it's it? not well delineated, like it would have its own... Um... Yeah. yeah, you're not really seeing that synovitis, that synovial sheath. So I just wonder whether it was a bursa, where it was ever a bursa. Or whether it was just a hematoma yeah, 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 yeah. having gone down heavily on their knee and then it's sore and unsurprisingly so let's have another look and then there was a hip effusion i think here i'm not quite sure how why i was interested in this hip effusion but uh, a few days ago oh no that's not me doing a hip effusion that's me doing a hip injection That's just the needle coming down. It's, it's quite yeah. a deep injection. You can see it's going down to about six centimeters, which is in injection terms quite deep. So you only really see the ghost of the needle there. So I've taken quite a steep approach. So you can see the needle in there. How much of these injections, John, are you doing tactily? And how much of it is reliant upon what you're doing here? I mean, when you, when you know you're down almost to the, the neck, are you are, are you saying to yourself, okay, I'm going to go down till I feel that, and then I'm going to back off a bit? Or that's that's what you'd do if you couldn't see the needle, but I can actually see that needle. Okay, okay. You just have to just here. Just if you look carefully there, you can just make out the needle tip. How difficult is it to puncture the, the capsule? Is that something that you also have a the ability to know when you pop through that, or not so much? Uh, Sometimes you feel it really obviously. Sometimes it's just the same as all the other tissue coming through. You know, getting through it's easy enough. You know, as long as you you've used using a sharp needle. You know, if it's not one you've used before, then it's an easy to go through. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and there you see the capsule swelling nicely. So, what is the what is the um, the brighter substance within the capsule? That's a good question. I think I would probably say fat, fatty change in the uh, within the synovium. I suspect in this case, but, 
Uh, what was the other one then? I'm just trying to think what was, what was this? This is just a hippic fusion, which we say that image quality is not fantastic. One of these days, this will go along. Yeah. Oh. You see there? So just I do. Bit. Yeah. So let me take a look to your right. Are we looking at about a two centimeters, maybe one and a half? No, no. About, uh, that's, that's a centimeter there. So that's about a centimeter. Just over okay. a so it's not huge, but but it's it's abnormal. And uh, you know, but what do you use for that? I've seen people who use 0. 0.6, others that use 0. 0.8, or do you not really care? It's just big. Bit of both. Uh, uh, the shape matters more to me. That line, it's not conforming to the shape of the thing. But if you turn the hip around, if, if you turn the knee around, rotate uh, the, the thigh. Uh, that changes the, the size and the shape of it. So you've got to be careful. If you're using a measurement, then you have to be careful to have the foot slightly externally rotated uh, to give a rely to rely on something like 0.8. Uh, so you know, I I just you just it's normal or it's not, and and you know, in you see them abnormal in that 0.5 or 0.6 because you look at the other side and they've only got point, uh, point 0.3. Can yeah, you take but, me through the sequence of you placing the probe on an anterior hip to get that view? You, you had mentioned to me that you do external rotation of the foot. Do you orient yourself so that when you first place it on there, you're pretty confident that's the view you're going to get? Or do you come up short axis femur and then until we hit the, 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 the bulky area of, of the trochanters and then turn at a 45? Some, sometime it's it the hip is tricky because people are big and and they have funny shapes and and so it's not uh, I, I don't think that there's there's a technique that I that I know of uh, it, when in doubt you take the depth right down till you see the bone and and if necessary you come up in short and you look for the ball yeah and, and, and what but it's it's really that knowing and and, and it's that knowing that you don't, because people, even though they intellectually they know that it's not in the horizontal plane. Yes. And the neck, you know, you've got the, <laughs> yes. the thing there and it comes off like this and some people it comes off like that and some people it comes off like that, but you're there or, or thereabouts. So so you follow that up and, and you come down or, or, you, or you're coming down following the, the femoral vessels, uh, however, or psoas or where, wherever is easiest, you know, if they've got a big tummy, it can be quite difficult, and and so what you end up doing is, is is you end up finding the thigh. But after you've done it for a while, what tends to happen is you know in that crease there where the hip joint is going to be, you put the probe and you point it obliquely going in, and you kind of fiddle it around and push until you come up with your uh, toy lollipop sort of look. <laughs> so now once you're here, John, do you take it up until you see the acetabulum and then you come back down just trying to orient that kind of thing? Any looking at labrum or looking for type of a any type of bright bony pieces between the acetabulum and, and the head of the femur? Or what are you thinking? Well you you do you do two things, or I do two things. I you orientate on the uh, on the shaft of the femur. So so that sense of small ball, big ball, flat line. And, and you just keep changing your angle and you know, you just go up and down it like, like you're following a tendon or, or, or a bone and you, you follow it, you see that the small, the small ball of the neck and then it should go to a big ball with the cartilage on the top. And then if you've got the, that plane, because what you're all, like, like all things, you're looking for that, for that orientation that gives you the structure the acetabulum, the cup, and the ball, and you're coming cup, cup ball, or acetab, and and in it isn't quite a cup. It, it you you see the rim of the slightly concave rim of the uh, thing, and just like when you're trying to get your perfect short axis on supraspinatus, you want the rim to fall away at the same time. You don't want to be going like a breakdown, so where it goes away on one side. So you orientate it so, so the, the rim falls away and you're straight onto the ball as a whole. And so it just happens at once. Like 
and when when you're there in a line with your mates and they say who's who's going to change the nappy and everyone steps backwards at the same time <laughs> and you, that's what you want is every they it should all step backwards and you do that with suit when you're getting your orientation on supraspinatus that's how you do it you, but the same with getting your orientation on the neck funnily enough you come off the acetabulum onto the ball and that seems to give you the good orientation on the neck as well so that oh, gives and, and your eyes are looking for um are we looking for labral defects are we looking for little um, bony uh, uh, what what is it that you're doing once you have that are you just looking for what are you looking for something that offends you yes. <laughs> uh, but, but at first you're just you're just getting that because once you've done it once you've got that plane then it it comes very naturally just to flick the probe 90 degrees and you and you find yourself okay. automatically Getting I got gotcha. you. The joint line, and then you okay. prove that to yourself by going yes. side to side, and the joint line not moving. Okay. Yes, the it should stay the same. Yes. And then, if if you're thinking about things like, and I don't think a lot about FIAs and all that sort of thing, but you could once you've got your orientation of the head, then you can expect the shape of the head. You know that that fall away for the neck is should be reasonably consistent around that. And so as you go round and you see that deformed, you might want to think about some of the, uh, some of what they talk about with that. But also you then get reasonable views of the acetabulum, acetabular rim. You don't get that quality of view until you get that orientation. And then you're sort of rolling round the side of the barrel with your uh, probe. And if you are, if the, if the patient isn't too big, and you've got reasonable depth on your machine, you can actually go all, almost all the way around. You can go right round to the back. You can look in at the side. You can look in at the back and everything. And people I don't- I haven't ever done that, but I, I, I think it's just a matter of, of keeping the, uh, the slice where it needs to be. And uh, yes. yeah, it is, doing that. Just... How much are you playing up in the iliopsoas area? How much are you taking a look at the, the inguinal um, you know, region. Again, are you just scouting around periodically for stuff or are I mean, you mostly just doing stuff. injections? Well, no, it, it depends very much on the questions. I scan a lot of groins for hernias. So we do wow. lots of inguinal hernias. Uh, you know, I can do anything up to 20 on a Monday. Oh, man. <laughs> I wished I had your brain. I wished what I would like to do I would just like to watch you go through over and over and over what you're doing and what you're looking for. Because when you do that many and you're that confident in what you do, there's nuances that you can immediately say, well, that's not going to be one. And that's going to be one or that's sort of one. Kind of like seeing a baker's cyst. You know, you can see stuff there, but it's not going to be one until you can actually see that whole process into the joint. I have no idea what, what, what you're even looking for when it comes to that stuff, man. And I don't even know whether I would ever be interested when you well exactly it's and it's it's a bit of a, a niche but uh, uh but i i happen to do a lot of it so uh so so i see a lot of those uh, in terms of psoas you can follow psoas it's not that difficult to follow psoas down to the uh to its insertion on the lesser uh tubicle but it's just a little bit of a faff when you when it's not clinically relevant very yeah. often at all so I just don't bother most of the time. The bursas that are up in the groin that 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 can sometimes get inflamed uh, between the ilia iliacus and the psoas and up in there that you don't need to look down towards the tendon insertion to do that. Gotcha. You, you see them around uh, immediately adjacent to the uh, uh, iliac psoas complex uh, at the level of our acetabulum, and they they just blow up like a big big balloon at the side there, typically. You know, and, and if they don't, then you're not going to see them because even if it is irritated there, and, and that is the pathology, with, with so much pressure of psoas, you're not going to get a buildup of fluid there unless, unless it's enough fluid to, to create that, that ball beside there. You know, if, uh, what you do see sometimes, and, you know, of uncertain clinical significance, is sometimes with your uh, hip replacements. You sometimes see that the, sh the, the psoas is being irritated as it goes over, and you see that obvious impingement, it be the obvious distortion of the psoas tendon as it crosses the acetabulum. 
and then sometimes and sometimes you'll say well you know if the patient's got enough symptoms to justify it you say you know perhaps you want to have a chat with your surgeon about that but but it it, it would have to be a pretty big issue certainly in, in public health uh, before they they run about they do a lot about that so 75 percent of your hip scans are primarily focused on injections or aspirations no i wouldn't say that i just they're just we get i get a lot of different questions from different people so they come uh so we do re reasonable these days depending on where i'm working the actual injections for the injections for the hip are not terribly successful they don't have a good medium term track track range so we do very few of them when we've audited the work uh in the units i work at they are of the opinion that you know patients with a hip score of and we use something called the oxford hip score where 20 is you really need to be going for surgery 20 and below you need to go for surgery much above there uh for the actual hip arthritis uh our surgeons are reasonably cautious about operating on them if they are uh, if they've had injections, certainly steroids. So, so there is some reluctance to do it there. And we find in the population that have severe symptoms, uh, then they, they, don't, they don't do terribly well for terribly long in general with the injection. And so we tend to be a little bit conservative about using them, or certainly where I practice, we are. And we don't do quite so many. Uh, uh, we used to do endless numbers of trochanteric bursa injections but now we 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 think we get much better results with shockwave you know that all the uh the likes of uh alice and grimaldi are very pro the physiotherapy side of that and the the loading programs and i think there's a lot of merit in that but a lot of the people who have it are not very good at complying with loading programs yeah. and so they they always traditionally did quite well with steroid injections but there is that high recurrence rate with steroids and so we're finding we're getting good results audited results from uh, from sh using shockwave and shockwave to uh reduce the pain and encourage uh sort of compliance and then and then loading is is our go-to combination wow. before we do and steroid for the ones that fail that we don't we don't recognize shockwave as a viable intervention in the United States. I do not understand that. Canada does. You guys do. Across, across Europe, they shockwave. We, we don't even have it as a billable item in, in, in our bag of tricks. And I don't understand. I don't, that's just absurd to me. But it is what it is, and, and and orthopedists are not using it. It's not used in in this in this in this nation. I don't I don't get it. I don't. I don't. I don't it, it's one of those things. We, you, it's the king's new clothes, as we uh, say. You, you familiar with that expression? Yeah, but he, he. Yeah, I think the story is that people were having to compliment him, and he was naked, and and, and they didn't have the guts to be able to say, "Hey, you're not having anything on." Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> And and so it's 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 arisen over the last few years, along with PRP and uh, uh, hyaluronic acid. And yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. And then there is work out there that that shows all of them in a good light, and then there is work that suggests that it's all bunkum. And uh, but but we find that uh, shockwave is is useful. It's useful in terms of a, a, having an alternative to steroids in these yeah. technologies. Yeah, uh, which we're keen on and uh, and the patient and it does give that sort of steroid like pain relief they interesting feel they've, they've had an intervention and it, it does no harm and doesn't inhibit the quality of the repair of the, yeah. tend of the tendon so we are we are good with it and we use it we need to here I, I I need to champion that, but I'm getting old and I'm running out of, I, I, you know, I only have a singular passion and it happens to sadly be ultrasound. So <laughs> I, I, I thought, thought briefly about getting myself a good quality shockwave machine and, and doing some work locally, but uh, I'm just, I'm not that commercially minded. And, and, and unfortunately to justify the cost, I, w I would have to do a lot of it and, and I'd rather do the diagnostics and I'm not yeah. that interested in doing the uh, uh, certainly that much of the therapy work at the moment. All right.
John, I am, I am, uh, I, I, I avoid the tarsal tunnel. And I would love to have you put aside in some kind of a folder um, mm-hmm. any type of, of, of pearls or, or, or whatever that you could use. Uh, what I would really like to have is one of your Sonohack videos where, where, where you drop off of the, um, you know, uh, the, the medial malleolus and, and can give us a, a nice little Tom, Dick, and Harry way of remembering you know where the FHL is and 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 where those kind of things are. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure you're not already very good at it, and you don't, and and you just don't know it. Because I don't you know. You know where uh, uh, tibialis posterior is. Yes, and yeah. I know where. Posterior. And and that's it. But 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 but, but here's the thing. I, I watched this bird guy, and he's showing me sprain ligaments under it, and and I'm going. Whoa, I, I, I just need to, I, I, maybe what I need to have is, is to have a, a buddy, you know, pat me on the shoulder while he goes through this and said, it's, it's nothing a lot amazing. I, I just, it, it's one of those areas that I refuse to feel good about. Do, do, just, just scan tibialis posterior, really, just, just scan down it and or get, get, get one of your, your kids or one of those. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of one of your things, and just scan tibialis posterior, and and it's like and, and it's like walking down your high street, and you go, well, and and you nod to uh, flexor digitorum, just go, and and follow that maybe, and then you nod to uh, as as you go round the malleolus uh, that you do you can do in your sleep. You're looking at all those fibers of uh, the deltoid. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's just, it's this what? kind of stuff. It's this kind of stuff that a three minute video while you're nodding to these, while that guy is actually videoing you doing yeah. it, it would be just invaluable to us. Yeah. And, but, and, but, and but really, I will you, try. Yeah, just try. But, but, but just come go down the tip post and you don't you almost don't have to do anything else. If you are tr- true on tip post around the malleolus and you just look next to you, you will see flexor digitorum. Don't worry about Harry. Harry, ha- Harry will, it just, it, it falls into the picture very easily once you've just done the other things. Cause you look at, you look at that and you, and you see the neurovascular bundle and you just follow that down. That's easy to follow down. You just go straight. And then you see it splash like that. And you kind of go, that's you, enough. You must not have understood the, the first part of this, John. When you say that's easy and you present it in a way that it's not a problem, you didn't hear me at the first say, it's a scary room that a boogeyman is in. And you're saying, mm-hmm. I've been in that room and it's not scary. No, so, it's not scary. All but you when you say is- neurovascular bundle, I see a cloud. See, I see a cloud mm-hmm. and I see these dark things that look like Mickey Mouse's ears. And I go, but what does it happen as I go, you know, how, what, what changes as I go down to the knot of Henry? I, I guess I just need to have, I, I, I need to spend a little bit more time on it, I guess. It's just, it's, yeah. it's one. You do, you, do. You, you, you just want to, you just want to enjoy it and realize that the knot of Henry is difficult. So, so don't worry about it, the fact that it's not easy. It's not Henry, I find that knot of Henry difficult. I have, to, I have to work with it every every time I want to find it. I have to kind of work with it, and that, so so that's nothing to worry about. The spring ligament is just that tissue on, under the uh, tibialis posterior. It's just just a, 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 as as you're driving down towards the navicular, and you think, what's between the tendon I'm looking at and the bone, and that's just it. What is the orientation of the spring ligament? Because I'm hearing it's not very everywhere. It's it, it, it's one of those ligaments that attaches loads of stuff and so you don't get or at least i don't get a perfect line of fibers in one direction because it's because it's not it's one of those spider-man ones it's it's trying to grip everything interesting so i can't ever really i I can't optimize it you're not going to get a beautiful picture of it you're just going to recognize what normal looks like by wandering around and every time you wander down tip post going oh that's that layer of mush is the spring ligament, and and then the deltoid ligament. You 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 you, you threw it out like you just just take a nod to those guys that are going. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know what what. But, but 
but that's that's what I mean. You don't try and do it all at once because because you, you you want to know it straight away. What you do is you that's what I'm, I mean. You just you just wander down tip post, and, and when you go down tip post, instead of worrying about it because because you've done it so many times, just wander down, and you just think actually there's this triangular black stuff that's just going down at the back of it, and just going going down like a uh, when when you get a nice one, it, it, it's like some sort of wigwam, lots of lots of sticks spreading out, or like a fan, just coming down. And but sometimes it just always looks dark. But if I just nod the probe a little bit, I'll I'll kind of get the sense that actually I'm getting bits, but none of the fibers seem to be quite complete. But you just get a flash of it, and sometimes they look a bit curved uh, because, and, and that's because you're catching them, and and they're kind of bent into into shells like an onion. And it's almost like you're looking at a little bit of onion there. And that's the back of it. And the front of it is, is a different structure. It, it is more like a bunch of sort of lasers uh, uh, coming away. Uh, so from a small center, you've got fibers going to various bits that you can pick out. Uh, you know, the, John, the, the, John, this is marketable. This is marketable. If you just had a probe in your hand, it's marketable. You keep it to five minutes or less. It, it's truly something that I would pay for and, 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 and people would pay for only because if I could look at something, if I could yeah. look at something and it was, it was as gentle as you presented it to me, as yeah. you do, as you went over it, it's just, there's nothing out there that 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 does it like that. Anyway, I've got to let you go. I'm already way over what I promised you. And you probably have your bowl of ice cream and you want to watch something on TV or something. So yeah, no, no kids. <laughs> <laughs> get a how, how long? How long do you have? So, so, so I'm, I'm getting the train up uh, up north tomorrow morning to meet them. Oh, so I'm, I'm going going up north. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me, John. We'll connect again, and I will. I will look at the. Uh, I will try to find that spring ligament and play around with that. But thank you. We'll talk again. Cheers. All, All right. right. Bye bye.